Hello everyone, my name is Al, and welcome to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today, on the map Cosmic Sapphire, we are starting with our purple Zerg player. From Italy, you know who it is, it's Reyna. In the opposite corner, our yellow Protoss player, from the United States of America, it is Estrella. Reyna versus Estrella. Two very good players in their respective races. Although, to be fair, um, Reyna's Protoss is actually kind of catching up to Estrella's Protoss, which is actually disturbingly scary. Uh huh. Estrella doing the block, Reyna going for the third, the usual that we see. So, Reyna from Italy, he is currently, and I actually forgot I have to look this up, just give me a second. He is currently sitting at third in the world on a Legulac. It's not too bad. That is uh, very high. He is just behind Serral and just behind Maru. Quality, quality player. On the other side, we have Australia, who is ranked 24th in uh, the world. And, you know, that sounds pretty bad, but it's not. 24th in the world means you are still extremely good and I think Australia lately has been doing really well especially his, his results lately have been quite good he's been doing well in tournaments and things like that so we'll see how these two play against each other Reyna is a very aggressive Zerg player he has I mean he was initially very well known for his Ling control Ling run buys Ling just usage in general you could not move out of your base for a second and Reyna would be throwing a bunch of burgl burglings zerglings into your mineral lines he still does it don't get me wrong but that was about a year or two ago he was very known for that and a lot of people questioned his late game where he's sitting at this point I think those questions have all been answered quite well by Reyna his late game is insanely strong although he seems to have a general uh, dislike to very long games which is often why we see him go into playing Protoss in tournaments against Zerg because he'd rather he'd ra rather play a, a PvP than get stuck in a very long Zerg vs Zerg game. Also he has shown a great dislike for Zerg vs Terran that goes into 40 minutes. I know he he often talks about Maru um, where Maru will just go defensive against him and yeah, <laughs> he he struggles against it. Now, what I really also find interesting about these two players is that this year, or at least this last GSL season, both of them decided to go out into Korea and to compete, which is really interesting because obviously GSL a very very Korean tournament, a very difficult tournament. Many still consider it to be the hardest tournament. Uh, just by the way, before I ramble on. Uh, there's a Void Rain production. Australia, are you taking us back a year or two? Uh, we'll see where he goes with this after the, the Void Rain. Reyna will see it. He's probably going to make his spores add on a couple of queens just to make sure he is protected. There is the Oracle, which is going to help Australia just move around the map. But anyway, so yeah, these two went to GSL and... I think GSL is very different from any of the other tournaments. If you look at the IAM tournaments, uh, the Dream Hacks, even things like Home Story Cup, it is a weekend that you play, you find out who your opponent is and 20 minutes later you're playing against that person. So there's no real time for preparation. Whereas with GSL, the groups are published early, they see who they're up against and they have lots of time to prepare for it. The Koreans are also very well known for, you know, working with their team and doing serious preparation for the matchup, for the groups. Um, oh, nice little control there, saving that, uh, that drone. So, if you didn't watch it and you don't know what happened, it is a bit late now, but I guess that's still kind of possible, then just mute it for the next minute or so while I talk about it. Uh, we see a forge and a twilight along with the Robo coming up. By the way, Roach Warren for Reyna. But yeah, so what happened is these two went, they struggled a little bit, 
and both got knocked out in the group stages. Uh, I think Reyna, there was a lot of hype around him, and then a lot of comments afterwards saying, yeah, he was smashed in GSL and destroyed. It, it wasn't true, not at all. Um, I think something that interesting that happened, um, and I think Tasis pointed it out quite a bit in the, the cast, um, was that a new build order had appeared for Terran. Maybe not new, but it, it had emerged again, was the uh, CC first into a two base push, which happened about four or five times, I think it might have been four, and every time that build order was played, oopsie, um, it won the game. So it wasn't necessarily that Reyna played poorly, but that um, the Terrans had prepared pretty effectively for it. So I'm hoping that he goes back again, tries it in the next uh, round that there is GSL, because it'll be very good to see um, what he can do about it. I mean, in the interviews, a little bit of a scuffle here, nothing major. In the interviews, the Koreans were very intimidated by Reyna and said that they're expecting him to go pretty far into the tournament, which unfortunately he didn't, but it would be nice to see what happens if he actually does go the distance. Australia as well, he played absolutely good games, just unfortunately he couldn't quite make it through. Um, now Australia's no stranger, it wasn't his first year, so he's played in it before. So unfortunately, yeah. Uh, Bit of a tough run for him, but yeah, again, same with him. Hopefully he gets to go a little bit deeper if he tries again. In this matchup so far, we see decent macro going on. Fourth base is coming up for both players. Immortals, uh, plus one ranged weapons coming up, and as well as the infester, uh, infestation pit, infester pit. Um, so I'm assuming that Rain is going to go into Lurkus because he's already getting the Hydra Den. Couple of Archons and this is actually, there's not much army for Australia. He's really just working on uh, getting those workers out. So far both players sitting with decent worker counts. 83 for Rain, 75 for Australia. These Roaches, not going to do too much. The Queen's coming with, yeah, they're just going to leave. Look at his creep spread. It is almost all the way to the door of Australia. And I've mentioned that this this a bunch, and, and this is really what separates the best Zerg players from the not best Zerg players, I guess, <laughs> is the best Zerg players get that creep so far out. So we see it on this side, it's almost at the bases. On the other side, it's the same story. It is so far out. If Australia wants to attack from any direction, he's got to go through a lot of creep before you can do anything. Australia is at this stage getting disruptors. Disruptors, very nice against roaches. They also are bounded queens. Queens cannot micro against uh, well, maybe a little bit on creep, but generally they can't micro against the disruptors. Reyna just putting a little bit of pressure on. I think the disruptor is going to help to kind of ward this army off. At the same time, going for his fifth base. So far not much in the way of worker kills. Three workers each. Really nothing too major. Yeah, here comes the stray. He's gonna push this away. Start getting rid of a little bit of this creep and just keep powering up. So he's going for a very robo focused bull um, with the disruptors. Now Rain is getting his lurkers but disruptors can deal with lurkers just fine. You have to push relatively slowly because it takes two disruptor balls to, or purification novas as it's actually called. I keep saying disruption balls and it's probably not the right, <laughs> right thing to say. Um, but it takes two of them to kill a single lurker. So you can't push heavily into the lurkers. You've got to take it nice and slow. So we'll see what happens in this push. A couple of lurkers are already set up. Yeah, I think Rain is going to be able to defend this quite well. They don't have the upgrades yet, so can't quite be used for attack just yet. Oh, good hit there. Yeah, it seems like he's not going to be doing too much, not pushing too heavily. We do at the same time see a huge amount of roaches on the other side. Four worker kills going down. That's not too bad. Now, oh, Rainer doing a little bit of work with a run by. Using those roaches, he doesn't mind getting rid of them. Um, 
They're not there to do excessive damage because he wants to be trading them out for Hydra's. Oof, nice to shot dead there. Uh, and eventually Lurkers. Okay, well, Australia's just gonna push on this base. I think Rain is just gonna give it up. Yep. So, in retaliation, Australia picks off five workers. Nice little boxing match between these two. Um, roaches were eventually dealt with. Ling run by going through, but it is caught by Australia's army. He's uh, seeming to be quite on top of this. The warp prism is sitting there, ready to warp in. Surprised he hasn't quite hit him yet. Decent micro, saves one lurker. Yeah, once that upgrade is done, uh, yeah, the lurkers get a lot more management. Good splitting there by Reyna, avoiding those disruptors. That is actually not that easy to do. Ooh, big lurker run by yeah, the worker sees them, it's just like, hi. They're gonna go have a nice time behind the mineral line. Recall on the army. Yeah, this is quite expensive for Reyna, I don't quite like this trade. Um, yeah, he cleans it up for three workers. Yeah, five lurkers are definitely more expensive than three lurkers. Ooh, watch out, watch out. Big. Okay, just gets one lurker, that's alright. Rainer pushing down into this side, gotta be careful. Zerglings derping around them, they're not getting too much done. And uh, we see Australia go for the dreaded Sky Toss. He's starting to build carriers. He's getting his plus one air upgrades. So he's getting ready for that um, that late game army. He's getting storm so he can have some Templar underneath. And also to deal with things like the Vipers. Not quite an easy unit comp to control. Now, I know that at lower levels, Sky Toss is... Ooh, Lurkers buried in some good areas, getting a lot of damage onto this army. Uh, they're just going to go for a base trade. It looks like it might be the case. Have to see how this works. Yeah, Australia just pushing heavily into the third base here for Reyna. Uh, you're gonna cancel that upgrade? Yeah, he's gonna. It's plus two melee. Gone. Yeah. Same time, Reyna's taken out the third of Australia. They just, they're just not gonna fight each other. It's more probes down for Australia. Australia is behind on the work account. At this stage, Reyna does decide to turn his army around and uh, try to defend what he has left. Disruptors getting rid of a bunch of the Zerglings. But I think Australia is going to lose this army. His supply is dropping heavily. He might have overextended a little bit with this uh, flank that came up from Reyna. Now that puts Reyna at a good position. In terms of units lost, a little bit more inefficient for the Zerg, but that is normal. 35 probes going down. That is not ideal. So even though Australia took down a base or two, uh, yeah, he took down this one and this one, the worker count is still at 80 workers, 80 drones for Reyna. So it's great that you take down a base, but still a lot of workers behind it. So Reyna just transferred them over to the other side. Probably going to be looking at getting the gold right now. The warp prism is moving in. We'll see a decent warp in. And I think uh, these zealots could get a bunch of damage done. Yeah, there they go. Uh, Reyna's defense seems to be on point. He's got a couple of zerglings. The army is coming in to help. Yeah, Australia picks up and he's got to move out. Actually a very nice defense there. Very clean defense. Vipers coming up. Vipers obviously very good against the carriers. I think you kind of need them against the carriers to yoink them into range of uh, your hydras and things like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, I was talking about Sky Toss. So at lower levels, so in, order, in other words, where I play on the ladder, Sky Toss feels absolutely broken. It feels like Protoss will mass up Sky Toss, move across the map, and win. At the higher levels, you cannot just make carriers. They do not cut it. And that's where it becomes slightly harder to control. In that the Templar needs to be in good position to be able to feed back through the Vipers. So that Vipers... Those are some decent disruptors. Um, so that the Vipers are not getting damaged. Uh, ooh, ooh, those are some very good storms. Australia hitting big money storms there. 
Uh, Reyna decides he's not going to fight this. He's going to move into the natural. Doesn't want to overextend too much. Yeah, and I think those Hydras are just going to move back. The Disruptor's coming in, trying to get rid of the Lurker. They so yeah, the control of this at the high level is a little bit more difficult. You're maintaining your carriers, you're working with your disruptors and your high templar, trying to keep everything in the right spot. Zealot run by here, again, not getting economic damage done. Estrella is not slowing down Reyna, and I think this is going to be his problem. If you don't slow that economy, the Zerg is going to run away with it, and you can look at the banks. Reyna's got a, a healthy bank, not... Not amazing, but healthy. Whereas Rain, uh, Estrella, excuse me, is uh, he, he's scraping the bottom of the barrel there. Upgrades looking pretty good. We see the plus three. Couple of Yoinks coming down. That's two carriers away. Goodbye. Disruptors. Two lurkers down. That's a very good hit there. Archon goes down. Now uh, these Vipers, Vipers doing their work. Now the Zerg spell cost is very good, watch out for the Disruptor. Now the nice thing about the Viper is that if the Disruptor does launch its Purification Nova and the Viper abducts it, it actually cancels the Nova, which is makes Vipers very strong in this uh, matchup. A little bit of a run by here with Stalkers, that's going to prompt Reyna to go back home. Now these Stalkers can get some decent damage done, and he's almost maxed out, he actually can't uh, reinforce. At the same time, he's decided to go for the Spire. Interesting. We'll see if that's going to be just for Mutalists. But I'm assuming it's going to... No, obviously, it's not going to be Mutalists. What am I saying? It's going to be Corruptors and then eventually into the Brood Lords. Yeah, uh, you, uh, you need the Vipers, you need the Corruptors to start dealing with the mass carrier. You can't just rely on Hydras. Unfortunately, Hydras do not have... Uh, the DPS, the tankiness to deal with them. Corruptors, if you've got a decent ball, you can move in, jump on the um, carriers one by one. Decent hits there on the disruptors. A little bit of a zer uh, zergler, lurker. Yeah, getting some. <laughs> getting a little bit of damage done. Nothing too major. Disruptor does get rid of it. Rain is just trying to be a little bit annoying. Obviously, he does still need to uh, open up supply, so losing a lurker here or there, but getting a little bit of damage done, not too bad. Oh, yeah, there you see. One disruptor does not kill a lurker, and this one is going to continue putting down some damage on these probes. Ah, it's full work is done so far, not too bad. Uh, this war prism at the moment, that's just having a great time. It's just been sitting there the entire game. Australia doesn't even move it with his army to reinforce. He did some good work on the creep spread. I mean, this creep has been pushed back all the way. Uh, Reyna is now trying to expand it a little bit again. Uh, but yeah, this is... If you ever feel like these guys are absolutely not human... <laughs> nice double yoink on the arc on there. Ooh, big storm in the choke. And this is where disruptors like to be... Don't like that he fired them out all at once there, but yeah. Disruptors down this little passageway. It's not a position you want to be in. Army moving on this side. They're going to cancel this. Yep, there's there's no way Astray's going to hold on to that. Ooh. Warping was happening, but the warp prism does go down. Yep, base gets cancelled. And we see the Protoss army moving down this side. Straight through Lurkers. I don't think that's ideal. Disruptors being joined so that they cannot launch their uh, disruptors or purification overs. But this army is still quite um, quite heavy. And at this stage, Reyna has dropped in supply. Estrella takes the supply lead with a lot more army. Obviously, he's got less workers, so that leaves him with more space for army. Nine workers going down for Reyna. And I think Reyna is in a bit of trouble. He needs to stabilize. He's getting 10 more corruptors. 11 more lurkers. No, he actually cancels them. Ooh. Oh, big hits on the disruptors. That is giant. Ouch. Okay, well, reinforcements are coming. Zerglings and Hydralisks. Now that bank is starting to be spent. Look, he's still got a lot left, but that was not the engagement Reyna was looking for. And Australia looking in a very good position at the moment. 
needs to be careful not to overextend. But at the same time, he does need to get some damage done. Kara is falling. You're also going to be careful not to fly those Corruptors over the Archons. Archons shred through those Corruptors. Because Corruptors tend to move in that uh, the flock, if we may call it so. What is it? Is that a flock? <laughs> Group. Uh, this is going to be difficult to push. Uh, especially if there's going to be lurkers there. Stray's going to push into the natural. He's going to try a storm. Nice. Disruptors. Getting a little bit of work done. Here comes the uh, the Vipers with their abductions. Getting a couple of carriers. And a Void Ray. Ah, this fight is close. This game is very close. Both uh, players no longer maxed out. And Australia is driving a bit of a wedge. Those Corruptors are very low. Couple more storms and uh, yeah, Reyna's Corruptors are in trouble. Australia is actually, I think Australia is in a very good position here. Can Australia take this? Oh, nice, nice hits again there. Okay, the Corruptors are going to come back. The Archons are standing there going, come at us, bro. Reyna has been knocked back into the Stone Age. He's only got four bases, one isn't mining. Uh, the gold is actually also not even mining, so yeah, look at look at his income, 360. Australia has dealt some incredible damage, and Rainer's supply is so low, he actually doesn't have too much. He doesn't have any gas income, so he can't make his higher tier units, and I think Australia may have pulled this off, just driving this strong army straight down the middle. And as much as I thought we might have an exciting ending, I think this is going to fizzle out, and Rainer's just going to GG, because... He can't, he can't come back to this. He's got no income. Ah, that hatch is also going down. These uh, zealots going to run by, do their fair share of damage. And, um, Reyna's got a bunch of, what is it? 16 Corruptors, but uh, Corruptors are not going to deal with the ground portion of this army. I think this might be the final push. Astraea, just weathering the storm and then bringing it straight back at Reyna doing some fantastic work he, he, the disruptors I really like the disruptors I think the disruptors uh, did a big job of adding to this army but storm as well don't get me wrong storm is very good GG is called and Australia takes a strong win over Reyna what an interesting match both of these players trading blows and I thought for a long time Reyna had it in the bag he was dealing so much damage but Australia with a really nice comeback. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, drop a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more StarCraft content. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.